Any business will come with risk and no business can eliminate all of these risks entirely. As a CFA and FRM student, when you're going to join the corporate world, you should be aware about what all different types of risk that a business actually faces. In today's video, we're going to be looking at what are the different types of risk that are there and subtypes of each risk. Hello guys, hi this is Ganesh Nayak. I train students who want to go and give the competitive exams in the world of finance like CFA, FRM, SCR. In the world of finance, risk means uncertainty or any potential of financial loss that can happen in your business. There are a total of 7 risks that ideally any business would face. Let us talk about each of these risks in detail. First is market risk. Market risk refer to the risk that the price of securities are getting impacted when there is a change in market variables like interest rate or prices of the commodity or prices of the equity. Let us try to understand this with an example. Suppose you have made an investment of $1,000 in Apple stock and today there was a news of Russia-Ukraine war and suddenly the stock market has gone down and the value of the Apple stock that you had purchased has also gone down. This is market risk for you. There are four subtypes of market risk. The first one, interest rate risk. Whenever there is a fluctuation in interest rate in the market, it impacts the price of the security also. So that is going to be an interest rate risk for you. The second subtype is equity price risk, which also refers to the volatility in the stock prices, which generally comes from two factors. The first one is general market risk, which means the stock that you're buying, for example, Apple is connected to the overall economy of USA. If today USA economy goes down into recession, the market will also go down and hence the Apple stock price will also go down. The second subtype is specific risk, which is only specific to the Apple stock that you have purchased. Suppose tomorrow there is a fire in Apple factory or there is a production issue in the Apple factory, it is automatically going to impact the sales of Apple and hence the share price of Apple. Third subtype financial exchange risk when you're dealing with international markets you're buying and selling products in different different currencies if you have not hedged the currency risk properly then this is the impact that you're going to face foreign currency risk the fourth subtype is commodity price risk which means there is a volatility in the price of commodity any business run their operations and sell their products which are dependent on a lot of commodities. Like for example, Apple, when they're manufacturing their phones, they also need titanium. If tomorrow the price of titanium goes up, the cost of production would also go up. And that is where your commodity price risk comes into picture. The second type of risk is credit risk. This is the risk involved when your counterparty fails to make payment as per the agreed terms. There are four subtypes of credit risk. The first one is default risk. When you're dealing with your counterparty, if tomorrow the counterparty is not able to pay you on time, that means the counterparty has defaulted. If you look at Apple, Apple has been selling their products to a variety of counterparties who are in turn selling it in different, different countries. If tomorrow the counterparty which was supposed to make payment to Apple makes a delay, then that counterparty is default on that payment. The second subtype is a bankruptcy risk. This risk means the counterparty has stopped all the operation and now the counterparty will be liquidated, all the asset will be sold, all the collateral will be sold and then you will get the money. In most of the cases, you will never be able to recover full amount. Now let us look at Apple. Apple has been doing business with a lot of counterparties. If suppose Apple has made delivery of the phones and tomorrow the counterparty post delivery has defaulted for XYZ reason, Apple will now have to wait for the money to proceed. This is nothing but the bankruptcy risk of the counterparty. The third sub point is downgrade risk. Whenever you deal with any counterparty, you also look at the credit rating of the counterparty. If tomorrow the credit rating of the counterparty goes down, that means there is higher chances that the counterparty might default in the future. That is nothing but your downgrade risk. The fourth subtype is settlement risk. Whenever you are doing any transaction with any counterparty, if you have made your side of the transaction, but the counterparty fails to make that on the date of the settlement, then that is called as settlement risk. And this is very common in the market and hence a lot of companies, they protect themselves from this risk. The third risk is the liquidity risk, which is further subdivided into two parts. The first one is funding liquidity risk. Funding liquidity risk would ideally occur when an entity is not in a position to pay back all the obligations that were there or pay back all the creditors in time. This generally happens because the liquidity or the funding within the company is not managed. If you look at Apple, when Apple is supposed to pay its raw material supplier and does not have sufficient cash, then that will be the funding liquidity risk for Apple. If you look at bank, majority of the banks during the 2007 crisis, they faced this issue with respect to asset and liability mismatch which created the funding liquidity risk for them and hence a lot of them actually became bankrupt. The next subtype is market liquidity risk. 
in which we are talking about the inability to find a proper buyer in the market at a proper price. This generally happens when the market is facing a credit risk or market is facing a huge liquidity crunch. And because of this, you find it very difficult to convert your asset into cash in time and hence your funding liquidity risk also goes up. If all the parties in the economy start facing liquidity risk, then it becomes a bigger systematic risk. The fourth risk is operational risk. Operational risk is faced by every company who are operating in the market and it happens because of four factors. The first factor, people. It means that people within the organization are not operating properly. There are frauds happening, they are making mistakes, that is people factor. Second is process factor, which means the way you design the process is not correct and which is leading to a lot of operational losses for the organization. The third is system factor, which means your computers, laptop servers, they're not operating fine and it creates an operational loss for the organization. The fourth factor is external event. Suppose there is an external event like earthquake or flood and because of which your operation is getting impacted and that is your operational risk. The fifth is legal and reputation risk. Legal risk is nothing but a potential litigation against the firm which creates uncertainty in the business. This generally happens when you enter into a bilateral contract and one party is filing a litigation against you for incompetency of these services. The next within this is regulatory risk. Regulatory risk implies that if the regulator changes rules and regulation, it has a direct impact on the working of the company. Now, because of the change, you also have to change your operations and your way of doing business. That is a risk that you're facing. Sixth risk, business and strategic risk. Business risk refers to your day-to-day -day risk of managing the business. It can be your customer trends changing, your prices changing of the input, or your suppliers negotiation breakdown. All of this is going to impact your day-to-day -day operations of the business. The next risk is the strategic risk. A lot of times companies invest into long-term strategic projects related to some capital investment into human capital or some IT system. And if it does not deliver result as required, then that is a strategic risk failure. The next risk is reputation risk. This generally happens if the market's perception against your firm is changing. And there are two factors for it. The first factor, if the stakeholders in the market has doubt against your financial soundness or your ability to make payment. The second factor is related to the perception of lack of fair dealing in the market. Reputation risk is very, very important for the business, especially for banks. If they lose their reputation, they lose their customer and hence they lose their business. So these were the top seven risks which any business actually face. And you being the student of FRM CFA and you're going to join the corporate world, you should know all of these risks properly and what are the implications of it. I hope you like this video. For more such exciting content, do like this video and also do subscribe to our channel.